You may have seen the title of this video and been instantly triggered. If that is the case, this is not the video for you. You may go to your safe space now. Gone? Good? Are we clear? Is it, are everybody else out of the room? Okay, cool. Let's get into it. So liberals love when men beat women. No, I'm not talking about the liberals who support the religion of peace where people make instructional videos on how to properly beat your wife. I'm talking about transgender athletes. As many of you may have heard, Matthew Bowling broke the Texas high school 100 meter record with an unbelievable time of 9.98 seconds. Victoria Jordan currently holds the record for females in the 100 meter event and her time was 11.16 seconds. Bear in mind, Victoria Jordan's feat is remarkable, but think about it this way. If Bowling had identified as transgender, her record would not even have come close to his. Why? Because he is a male. Now, some of you might argue and say, oh, well, Matt Bowling is an outlier and that doesn't happen all the time, but I would challenge you to think of it this way. The person who came in 25th in the 100 meter event in Texas this year had a time of 10.5 seconds. So the fastest female, if she had been forced to compete against biological males, would have come almost a full second behind the 25th placed male in this event. Men biologically have certain traits and women have biologically certain traits. This is just a fact of nature. This leads me to Mary Gregory. Oh, so stunning and oh, so brave. Now, Mary was a participant in the 100% Raw Women's Powerlifting Championships recently, wherein she broke all the pre-existing records for her age and weight classification. But afterwards, she was actually stripped of those titles because the federation in charge of hosting this powerlifting competition said that they recognize physiological classification rather than gender identity. And Mary Gregory was upset about this and said, where do we draw the line? Hmm, where do we draw the line? The line should be drawn thusly. Men compete against men, women compete against women. It is not that difficult, but when we blur this line between what men can do, what women can do, what it will lead to eventually is the eradication of female athletics as we know them. This will lead to us having only men's sports and co-ed sports. And what's gonna happen when we have these two classifications only. The men, the biological men, are going to completely dominate women to the point where women will stop even trying to compete in these competitions with which they know they have no chance. Now, some of you might say, oh, well, this will never happen, or this is not gonna happen for years down the road. Is this happening right now? Yeah, absolutely. That leads me to my next point about the real world consequences of having transgender athletes participate against biological females. We look at the case of Selena Sewell, she is in Connecticut and she is actually a high school student participating in track. And what's upsetting to Selena, what she said is that you see these biological males identifying as transgender and then competing against her, knowing full well that they have better chances of winning than she does. And in her case, actually what happened was she missed qualifying for a very important meet that could help further her career and her aspirations for collegiate track and field because the people who took the top two spots in that event were biological males. And she realized that that was unfair to her and it actually hampered her chances down the road into the future. Who knows what chances she may have lost out on, what scholarships she might have lost, what chances she might have lost just because we had transgender biological males taking the spots that were rightfully hers. In March of this year, Nancy Pelosi introduced HR5, known as also the Equality Act. This bill, if passed, would allow gender identity and sexual orientation to be federally protected classes. It was passed in the House of Representatives on May 17th with 228 Democrats voting for it and 173 Republicans voting against. Imagine the ramifications of such a law. Imagine what this means. Let's think about this objectively. This means now that any male who feels like it can say, I identify as transgender, and then they would be allowed to participate in these high school sports and you can't say anything about it. That's what this bill has the end goal of accomplishing. Oh my gosh. Are you hearing the words coming out of my mouth? This is ridiculous. This is the height of ludicrosity. And yes, ludicrosity is a word and this is it. With this law, you can have a man identify as a female and have unrestricted access to female locker rooms. Now, some might argue, oh, this is every man's dream. This is what men dreamed of for decades. But if you think about it, 
this means that even someone like myself who does have high testosterone, I mean, come on, I have high testosterone. I could say, I'm gonna take some estrogen and just, in a few months, I'll compete against the women. And do you really think that your children or those women would have a chance against me? Even with estrogen, the odds are stacked against them. And it's not fair for men, biological men, to be able to steal from what women have the God-given ability to be able to go out and accomplish just because we say we identify as females. Is that the kind of world you want your daughters to grow up in? Is that the kind of world you want your sons to grow up in? A world where a biological male could be marginal at best competing against men, but then be the best competing against women. I don't think so. This is the world we live in in 2019, where wild, feral feminists can gallivant around in their pink hats screaming, F the patriarchy and we can't stand men. And they are the exactly the same first ones who will prostrate themselves at the feet of a biological man just because he identifies as a female. That's not okay. All this in the name of being progressive and standing for equality. If I claim to be standing for women, and I am, I can think of this as nothing more than the biggest slap in the face to women, nothing more degrading to them than saying that men should be allowed to compete right alongside them. Men or males, women or females, period. If this triggers you, that's your problem. The first revolution is when you change your mind about how you look at things and see that there might be another way to look at it that you have not been shown. The revolution will not be televised, not be televised, and be no rerun, brothers and sisters. The revolution will be live.